but we are live on Tilson Live, so we're excited to have everybody here today. We, um, Eric Allard with Tilson Homes, thank you so much for joining us today. Please hop on in. We're going to get started here in just a second. Uh, we are joined, as we are every single time we do this, by our fantastic moderator, producer, um, all things wonderful in marketing, Don Dancer. Say hello, Don. Hey, everybody. So uh, Don is joining us today, and we have a special guest joining us from Georgetown, by God, Texas, Danielle Watson, sales veteran extraordinaire at our Georgetown Design Center. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, so, and of course, I'll be here helping to answer questions. You can post your questions in the chat. We'd love to hear from all you guys, everybody on our Facebook family, everybody on our YouTube family. Um, we're excited to have you here today. We are doing another Tilson Live about customization, and we'll be customizing the Rock Wall today, which is a model home up in Melissa, Texas, uh, that Danielle did for a customer of hers. So um, without before we get into that, though, Danielle, tell our good folks a little bit about yourself. What brought you to Tilson Homes? What do you, what do, you do here? Why do you like it so much? And go. How long have um, you been here? I've been with Tilson for about six and a half years now. Yes. Um, feels like a lifetime, but... <laughs> It's been fantastic. Yes, um, I, I came from the world of police dispatching and helping people in that form and fashion and decided I wanted to take a different route in customer service and help people with beautiful homes. So that's well, where wonderful. I am now. I'm glad you did. So what do you like, what do you like about that? What's the, what's the most fun part that you get to do? Besides being on Facebook Live, of course. <laughs> I know you love this. People design their homes specific to them. Um, you know, things that matter to them. If they want a specific area to be bigger because they've got a large family or they need a, a, just different features that are that are very custom and specific to them, it's it's fun. It is fun. I know it's not as fun as police dispatch, but we try to make it as fun as we possibly can. So anyway, well, I'm grateful that you're here. Thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, I know you are super, super busy. I can see the stack of plans <laughs> behind you. Uh, that you have stacked up back there that you're drawing. I, know I always have it backwards. I don't know what good point. But yes, back behind there are plans that Danielle is working on for customers and prospects where she is redrawing, making changes, customizations. So, um, and she's a busy mom and a busy wife and, and all these kinds of things. And, and yet she's still carving out time to do this today. So thank you. I'm grateful for you. Um, so let's do that. Folks, post your questions in the chat. We'd be glad to answer them for you. Don will be helping moderate along with Kelsey and Nick and, and Danielle and I are here to answer your questions. I think she has some backup there at the office that's helping, um, perhaps somewhere. <laughs> um, and, uh, so anyway, we're going to be helping answer your questions. Anything you want to know about customizing a home, building a home on your land, financing a home that's being built on your land. Um, we can't help you with any kind of election results or uh, hanging chads or anything like that, but we can help you with everything building a custom home on your land. So tell us a little bit about this family, Danielle. Um, I'm going to run the, the slides for you and you just tell us, tell us what brought these people to us and where they built and what they're doing. They built in Vernon County. Um, they're on something like I think 35-ish acres around that. Um, they moved down from the Dallas area. They came down to retire, but they've got adult children and who are creating their own families and their own lives. And so they still wanted a place that was big enough to have everybody there for holidays and gatherings and events and stuff. And um, they they were looking at the rock wall since the beginning. Um, awesome. They were looking at a couple other different floor plans, but one of their um, constricting factors was that they already had their septic installed and it would only allow for up to a 3,500 square foot home. So they had to stick within that. Um, so they oh, landed okay. the So we get that question from time to time. I'm glad you hit on that, that can, can I ha can I use a septic that's already existing on my land? Is that possible? So in this case, that that's exactly what we did. Yeah. Yep. But it so did, what was that process it like with the county? To only a certain square footage when I think she would have preferred a little bit bigger, but it, we got it to work for them. Awesome. Awesome. What what was that process like with the county? How how did that work in this situation? I know every county varies a little bit. Vernon County is easy. It's okay. just a simple submittal for application and no big deal. And the customer actually took care of that themselves. And yeah, it was no problem. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. So so folks, this is being built like she said in Burnett County. That's just to the kind of the northwest of, of Austin, Texas. Um, beautiful, beautiful rural area. Although it's turning not rural, I guess a little bit. But, um, 
Yeah, so, this is great. yeah, great, great town. There's Bertrams out there, of course, Burnett, uh, Marble Falls kind of spills over into that way. So um, anyway, gorgeous, gorgeous area. So tell us what it was about the rock wall floor plan wise that kind of attracted them, them to this. Um, they wanted an area where they could have a very large dining room. Oh, and we will, I think, get into that in a little bit. Yes, we will. We, we didn't change the changes. Um, but it was an easy change on this one to, to give them a big dining room instead of the formal dining room that you see. It comes with standard. But um, aside from that, they wanted uh, things like the, the open kitchen, the Jack and Jill bathroom between the other bedrooms, um, their big master bedroom, a big master closet, and then a, a very large shower that all kind of attracted them to this plan. Yeah, so this is kind of the ultimate in split floor plan design, right? It's not just split, it's like different time zones kind of split. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I don't know if you've ever been, the, the model home up in uh, Melissa, which of course I've been in that one, and it, it's just, you kind of wander all through the home everywhere, and then you, I've, I've been there with customers who are like, well, I, I didn't see the master, and you truly have to like walk them back because it's so secluded. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really, really nice. So. It also has amazing storage. Like, I love the amount of storage in this home. Yeah, which is great for country living. I mean, obviously, most of our ninety-one percent of what we build is is out there and uh, outside of incorporated cities. So they don't, you know, not a lot of trips to town, ideally. So, well, tell us a little bit about some of the changes that they made. So I guess I can go in order of what you got up there. Um, the first one, the the back porch. So that was a big one to them. They wanted it extended just a little bit bigger than what it came at. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to make sure that that back breakfast window was actually covered. Well covered, okay. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, there we go. So they just extended it a little bit, made it a little bit bigger and brought that over. Nice. Um, the second one on here, they did, so the way that the master closet is originally designed, you can access it from both the bathroom and the master bedroom. Um, they changed up a little bit and closed off that door from the master bedroom, so it just has one entrance from the bathroom instead. And it gave us it gave them an extra wall actually for furniture. I'm guessing that'd be yeah. great. It's a great idea. Yeah, and for shelving and stuff inside the closet itself. Oh yeah, look at that! I never think about a closet because I have like <laughs> three things I wear, and they all have been seen on Facebook Live. They're Tilson shirts. <laughs> because their closet was also made a little bit smaller when they did option number three, which was add the bonus room and the theater room and stuff upstairs which then puts the stairs in that location and kind of eats up a little bit of the closet, but that closet is pretty big enough that it, it's, big. Yeah. it's not super damaging. Yeah. That closet's almost its own room. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. And so what was the, uh, what, what did they want to do? Were they going to use the upstairs as the bonus in theater or did, were you aware? Or? So they have actually their elderly father who was living with them, okay. um, who did have a bad a bedroom, occupied a bedroom downstairs, but um, he wanted, he's not elderly enough that he's, you know, he is hundred percent able to go up and downstairs and he wanted his own kind of TV room and place to, to go by himself. So that's what they were using it for originally or planned to use it for. Cool. And I like the way this one works because it does not put any living space over the actual family room. So you don't, you know, if he's got a Star Wars going or kids get up there and get rambunctious. It's not right on top of kind of where you're where you're hanging out with, with friends and family. Uh, it actually does put a full full bath up there, which is cool. So yeah, they're, they're just under 3,500 feet. Okay, what else Probably we got? Going? Wrong, but you can still do that and keep. I think the cathedral ceiling option in the family. Yes, you can. Too. Don't worry. Someone will ask us that here in a moment. I'm sure. <laughs> So yeah, you guys put your questions in. We'll stop here after we get, go through these changes for a little bit of Q&A, but uh, we'll let Danielle run us through the rest of these changes and then uh, maybe Dawn, we can stop there for some, some questions or shout outs that we got going. Yeah. Um, next they did in the kitchen, they did switch out the sink to just be the farm sink or the, the apron front style sink. Uh, and then they also, that island traditionally comes standard with a trash can pull out, but they traded that out and they actually did a trash compactor in that location trash as well. Compactor, okay. Very yeah. nice. Um, so one of the biggest changes, and that was one of the, the biggest things to her, was that a massive dining room. So instead of the, the formal dining room that's on the front right of the foyer, 
Um, then we switched that out and put doors on that and made that the study. And then we opened up the study and we turned it into a, just a really large dining area. Oh, we took out the closet and opened it up to the family room. And it just made a huge difference. Picked up this four or five feet of space mm -hmm. here. Oh. And we kept that inset that's kind of to the left of that, that space, that dining room, um, to allow her to still be able to put a hutch and stuff on that left wall. So it worked out really well. Beautiful. That's nice. Nicely done. Um, number seven, that back bedroom. That's where dad plans to, to stay. Um, and they wanted him to have that bedroom they thought was a little small for him, but they wanted to make sure that those doors to the closet didn't open up into his space. So they actually switched him out to pocket doors on the closet. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, Don, you want to stop here? Maybe we can throw in some of these shout outs or ask any questions folks have while we, we pause here with these changes that we've done. Yeah. Um, we'll do, do some of the shout outs. Um, let's see, let me hide this real quick. Get Hi. you guys back up there. Um, so we've got Philip saying hi from Denton, Texas. What's up, hi, Philip? Welcome. We've got Kelly's doing? actually joining us from Las Vegas, Nevada. Wow. All right. Welcome from Vegas. Um, Peggy's joining us from McKinney. They're building a Livingston in Fannin County. So really wow. excited. Thanks for doing the videos. Um, Wendy is asking what she needs to look for in a lot um, as far as utilities, et cetera. And then how, how does getting utilities happen with Tilson? Danielle, would you know anything about looking for a piece of property? And um, Well, yeah, it depends on are you looking for a small lot in a city or are you looking for larger acreage out in the country? There are quite a few differences between those two. If you're looking for a small lot, we've got things to contend with like um, city sewer versus septic or um, build lines or easements or, or stuff like that. We would have to take care of and making sure that we've got a house that fits if it's a smaller lot. Um, as far as utilities, I, do you want to kind of explain? Yeah, so, so it, uh, uh, we include a 50 feet of water and electrical line and every, in the, like, if you go to our website and look at the pricing there, which kind of what the, the, um, perspective of most folks that are tuning in here, the price that you see on that website is going to include 50 feet of water line and 50 feet of electrical line. Uh, it doesn't include any septic or sewer line because we don't know which one you're going to have. Um, Depending on which you're probably always going to have to have some kind of water line and always going to have some kind of electricity. So we're pretty sure about that. So those are included. Um, and then depending on where you are, you know, if it's a private well, obviously we need to look at getting that done. And then um, or if it's a, some kind of public water supply, whether it's a municipality or some kind of consolidated water supply, then they typically have what's called a water tap, a tap fee or a, a meter fee just to, that you pay to get a meter actually installed. And then we run the water line from the meter to the home. Um, so that, that's how you go about that. And we actually guide you through that whole process during our stake out appointment. So uh, very early on in the process, like in the first couple of weeks, actually, we uh, meet you out at the property with once you've got the changes to the plan, like Danielle's done here, meet you out there, kind of get it laid out. And then we evaluate what all those utilities look like. But if you're looking for land, um, those are definitely things to consider. You know, look to see if power's on your side of the road. Look to see if there's other water meters, you know, on your side of the road, there's other houses. Um, kind of as you're driving around looking at, you know, has it been three miles since you've seen the last electricity transformer? That might be something to, to consider. So um, anyway, it's, 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 a, it's pretty simple, but we can certainly walk you through all of that. Wonderful. Uh, Cecile is joining us from Corpus Christi. Um, and she actually has a question that isn't populated that I can I can pop up, but she is asking if it's possible to put the bonus room on top of the garage on any of our home plans. Yes. <laughs> we have we have several. Um, the biggest one comes to mind is the Wimberley. Definitely, oh. that, that comes that way. Um, the Frio also, although it doesn't come with a garage, there is an option to do a garage with a bonus room above the garage on that one. That's right. But so yeah, it, 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 we have a couple of them that it's the custom option to do it on, and on others we can we can design it that way to to a large degree. Exactly. Okay, great. And then Denise is asking us if she has two lots, um, will she need to get them replatted in order to build on them? That depends on the city, county, location, HOA, subdivision, um, depends on where they're at. But yeah, so we, you can, if you can uh, let get, get one of our consultants, so set up an appointment, 
get us exactly which city and or subdivision or county that you're building in and and we can find that out the biggest thing would be to find out if you currently have any surveys on one or both of those uh, lots that would help a lot without a pun intended that would help <laughs> industry if you could bring us that uh, Danielle, did you think I acted different when we were on just because we're on on video? I'm pretty much the same. Uh, so yeah, if you could if you get us that information, we would be glad to reach out to um, whatever city or county, municipality, POA, and and find out exactly what they're going to require. But that's a great great question because um, if it's a municipality, they almost always do require it to be replatted, and that's how you get like because there's typically going to be some type of utility or drainage easements running down the sides of each of those two properties and you can't build on top of easements. So you have to get them to remove those easements. They typically make you replat that as one piece of property, but not always. Sorry, that Any is all the questions we have right now, guys. Oh, yeah, so no, okay. I think I see a howdy from Bull Verde, Texas on, on YouTube. Yes. We have to say that they say howdy, it's an obligation. I'm sorry. And then Hawk is also telling us that he is back from deployment and met with Darla yesterday and things are going great and is working on modifying the San Jacinto. Nice. Welcome back, Hawk. And thanks for your service, man. We appreciate you. All right. Well, Ms. Danielle, will you take us through what in the world we're looking at with this home? It's beautiful. There's the front of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. This one specifically comes with both stone, brick, and a little bit of board and bath. Nice. Uh, so as you're making your design selections and stuff, you would get to choose all of that. Or prior to that, we can change it up too if you wanted a little more board and bath or more stone or however you wanted it. Yeah. So now, so this is now the dining, the formal dining room Yes. over here. And this is now the study. Is that mm -hmm. okay? And you can see they have a beautiful view. It's hard to see maybe, but this just goes on forever because they're on a big old hill up in Bertram, Texas on 35 acres. Just really pretty. There's the front porch. Um, this one does come standard as you see it with the front porch. Yeah, and you can see, you know, how we're doing our, these are full-size flagstones, you So you can see this is, you know, three, four inches thick. Um, it's, it's, it's not a kind of a thin veneer on the exterior that we do. It is a full-size stone and and or brick some beautiful cedar accents and a very nice mahogany door with wrought iron texas star all that and what what might we see what's some of this blue stuff that somebody might see while their house is under construction what do we what i know i can see what this one says it's hard to say it actually says no shoes oh. so yeah the builder when they get to a certain point we you know we tell folks uh hey take your shoes you know once we got the flooring in really especially any kind of carpet and wood um we don't want other contractors or anybody wearing their shoes inside. So we get a nice little friendly masking tape that says, take your shoes off. <laughs> Masks are optional. Um, all right, so now what do we got going on? That's the back of the house. Um, this home specifically has brick on the exterior of the rear of the home. So as you can see it, it's full brick on the back. And then you can kind of see the, the extension of that rear porch that they made to cover that back window of that breakfast area. Gorgeous. And what room are we looking at here? That is the master. So in that master bedroom, it's got a little uh, cathedral with uh, some little beams in it. Very pretty. So ours is our, over our tub back here. Mm -hmm. And I guess on 35 acres, they got about all the privacy you could ask for. So I think they're good. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see just these beautiful fixed glass windows here in the family room and in the breakfast that wraps around. This is, this is dad's room. Yep. Um, and then I think these two windows are fixed, and these I believe are casement windows. Casement, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of they have a little hand crank down here and open up uh, sideways. They so. open this way. I don't know how to explain it other than that's saying actually that. perfect. That's great. That's much better than I could do with. The <laughs> so and yeah, guys, keep keep uh, keep putting your questions in the chat. We'll be glad to answer them as we as we go through this. We're gonna look at a couple more of the pictures that uh, Danielle did with the changes with these folks. But put your questions in the chat, and we'll be glad to answer them. Oh, nice. There's the rear porch. Yeah, you can yep. see the extension a lot better in, in that view. Yeah, so it was important to them to have it extend all the way over this window in particular. Um, you can see we're doing the Hardy on the soffit, the complete James Hardy system. So all of your fascia, your soffit, you can see the, the pre-drilled ventilated soffit going all the way around. Um, our quattro post bases, which are really beautiful and super strong. 
Um, and then I think we've showed it before, but we kind of have this outer layer called underpinning or sand topping that is specific to Danielle's neck of the woods uh, where they have no woods. It's uh, the hill country. So uh, you won't see this in uh, the Gulf Coast or in um, North Texas, but you will see it uh, pretty well every house in the, in the hill country. So, all right, now let's go inside. What do we got? What are we looking at all here? The drop zone. So on the left is kind of, you can kind of see the kitchen island in the background. That's where you come in from the kitchen area into their drop zone where they can kind of, it's a mud room almost where you drop your shoes and your bags and everything before you go out to the garage there, which is what that door goes out to. That's right. No excuse for dirty shoes on our pretty wood floors. Don't make it happen. And then there's the laundry room, which is actually off the drop zone. Um, so you don't have to go through the laundry room to get to the, the larger of the garages in this floor plan. But in that laundry room, it's got cabinets all the way across the top and it's got room for a, a small freezer and then a washer and dryer. And then that little smaller cabinet. Yeah, nice place to store your stuff. Mm -hmm. This just kind of shows the openness. Yeah, so that's kind of standing in what used to be the study, but they opened up and turned it into their big dining room. Nice. So yeah, how open it is. They must do a lot of entertaining because this is a massive space. Yeah. They've got several kids and they're all married with their own children. And so they wanted to make sure that they had enough space for everybody to come back. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's happening and, over here? So that is standing in what used to be the formal dining room originally, but they closed it off and turned it into the study and put the, the double French doors on it from the foyer. Yeah. we got a lot of folks, of course, obviously working from home these days or uh, kids maybe doing some remote learning either one or three or multiple days of the week. Uh, so this is a, this is a really much more useful space now and moving forward than maybe it used to be in the past. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that's kind of standing, I guess, in the foyer area, almost looking into what is now the open dining room and family room together. Yeah, this home is just beautiful. I mean, the view, you can just yeah. see like two counties away <laughs> yeah. right here. That's gorgeous. But yeah, so they, this space is actually even variable. You know, you may have a six or eight person table in there most of the time, and you can easily extend that out to 10 or 12 should they need a rise. So look at all the outlets. My goodness. <laughs> a lot going on. We got floor plugs. Okay, floor, yep. Command central going on in here. Folks, put your questions in the chat, and we will be glad to, to kick in on those here in just a second. Tell us a little bit about what they chose in here. There's the kitchen. It's pretty standard as far as layout is concerned. They did do some upgraded appliances. Um, and you know, with that vent hood, yeah. um, and then they upgraded the backsplash. And yeah, tell us what, is that like a stone or travertine kind of looking? I can't tell. It looks like it. It's really pretty. But, yeah. It's a travertine. Okay, perfect. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Don. You're welcome. Okay. Luck over skill any day. <laughs> and this is the uh, the trash compactor they did, yes? Yes, there it is. And you can kind of see the sink a little bit in that corner. Yeah, the farmhouse. Very nice. Very nice. Man, the views out the breakfast room are just, just killer. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful piece of property. Where are we now? Master bathroom. Mm. So again, this is pretty standard for this floor plan. It's you know standard size shower, tub, the layout of the um, sinks and stuff. This yeah, and so, and so we do a these little tile shelves in, in, in every shower that we do. Uh, this one happens to have a seat in it, which I believe this model uh, comes with that anyway. But uh, and the, and the semi frameless class, like you said, that's included in, in any of the showers that we do. Um, just a lot of natural light pouring in here. Your LED recess traverse lights and of course all LED uh, vanity lights and the massive closet and then the water closet. Well, I know that, uh, so I think this is, oh, what we, so tell upstairs. us about this. The bonus room. Yeah. So that's that's the upstairs bonus room and then those open doors a little to the left, that's the uh, into the theater room. And then that is the full bathroom that is upstairs off of that bonus room. It's super convenient. So someone could, you could easily turn that to guest quarters. Um, mm -hmm. 
little weekend spot, really, really nice. Okay, so I know that we've probably got some questions that have stacked up a little bit, so we want to be sure we can answer those for folks. Um, Don, do we have any questions that we can answer? I see a few on there. Yeah, um, we have a question over from YouTube um, asking if we can do kind of a quick overview of the process if they were going to come in with their own complete plans already owning their land. <sighs> so just a real short question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would initially want to schedule an appointment to kind of meet you, walk you through our models, kind of talk about what is typically included versus upgraded for us and how our process normally works. From there, if we think that you're, you're a good fit for the process, I would then take a look at the plan that you've got and kind of talk through it with you and go from there. But there's a lot more to it than that if you want to expand on that, Eric. Yeah, so I mean, what we're typically going to do is first thing we're going to talk is is budget. You know, we want to be sure that we're a good fit, um, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna double check, probably find a floor plan of ours that's close in size and features to to the one that you bring to us. Um, and so, in that first appointment, that's really what we're going to do for sure. We're going to go through uh, your plan that you've had done. Uh, we're going to look at you know, square footage of living area, square footage of covered porch, square footage of garage ceiling heights, you know, type of, you know, what, what kind of facade we're looking at. Is it stone? Is it stucco? Is it brick? Is it board and bat? Is it lap siding? Um, how many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? How many lineal feet of cabinet? So we, we actually go through that in pretty good detail. Uh, and, and we can give you a very pretty accurate price, uh, typically on the first visit. Maybe sometimes it'll take a return visit while we look a few things up uh, to get you a very accurate price on exactly what uh, your plan would would cost to do it that way, and then we just kind of proceed to see if it'd be a good fit. You know, the, when I you know when I say a good fit, I mean you can look at our website. Um, obviously, we have we have a a pretty you know we, we have a variety of plans, but there's we have a style, we have a type um, that, that that we're very very good at doing and very very good at executing. And um, then there's some other types of homes that that we're just not as familiar with. So you know you're not going to see a lot of Mediterranean Spanish tile that kind of thing, right, on, on, on our website, because that's just not not typically something our customers are after. So when I say we're a good fit, we're going to look at that plan and make sure that's something that we feel like we can execute on well. And that's when a, a veteran like Danielle can take a look at that. When you see the stack of plans behind her, um, that's what she does, uh, is, is make sure that w it's going to be a successful endeavor for you, um, that, it's gonna be, that you're going to leave with a great experience. So that's how we do that. And then we, we price it out um, using your plan. We can do that. Okay, great. Um, Philip has a question about the placement of the tub faucets. Um, I guess he's frustrated with where where he was seeing yeah. that one. Um, because I, I, I it's that an picture. issue, and can, can we change that? Yeah, I pulled the picture up. I, I, I can I can explain why we do it that way, and then um, doesn't mean we can't change it. So uh, what he's talking about is why do why do these builders put these faucets right here on the front of the tub? I'm trying to get in. Like you said, I'm disabled. This is an issue. Uh, we do try to leave at least three feet um, to get into the tub. Now, if you're trying to sit down on it and swing over, yes, I can see where this would be a struggle. It could possibly go on this other side over here behind this cabinet. But the the biggest reason we put it there, um, I know we tout Tilson's warranty, our service department. Um, when you when you service your own homes, you you and are serious about it, you make accommodations for if things go wrong you know we never plan for them to but if they do we won't be able to fix them without having to destroy your bathroom so this is these are put here for an accessibility reason so if we have to access that um the the valves replace any kind of valve cartridges service this uh, in any way typically the the drain is on this side as well and you typically want the faucet on the same end as the drain because your overflow is going to be there as well so it just makes it for us or homeowner future you know, if you if, if something gets stuck down the drain, you, you drop your wife's wedding ring or something down there. It's it's a little bit easier to access that if it's on this open. You know, you open these cabinets up and boom, you have access to the faucet, the drain, the water cutoffs for the faucet. Um, it just makes for easy usability and livability on down the road. It does not mean we couldn't move it to the other side. Uh, we just want the customer to understand that it's going to it's going to be a little bit more of an issue to access it on that side. So you may have to like rip the cabinets apart if, if there's a trip. You have to rip the cabinets apart. You have to rip the tile off the top of the deck or granite off the tub deck. Um, it, it just depends. So it's it they're purely for a service service accessibility issue. 
All right. And then Donna is asking if she doesn't want a tub in the master, would we move the placement of the shower? Danielle, what would we do? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you can actually, I think that's one of the custom options you can mess around with on our website is do no tub and just one big shower. We can also further customize it from there if you wanted more of kind of a walk-in style with no glass or whatever you were looking for, multiple shower heads or rain shower heads or any of the above. Yeah, we, we can definitely do it. Okay, great. Absolutely. And then Candy is asking, she likes the outside look of that custom magnolia that we showed with the board and batten. And she's wondering mm -hmm. if she can downsize the house to fit within her budget. I would suggest starting with a smaller plan and making the outside of it look like that. Um, I think we've got several, especially now in our portfolio that, especially if you're looking at the sea elevations of some of our smaller plans, we can definitely accommodate that on a, a smaller plan and start with that one instead of starting with a magnolia and, and trying to downsize it. Yeah, Candy, kind of the 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 secret of that one that, that made it look really so cool uh, is that it's symm uh, symmetrical across the front. So, and we can do that to any of our plans. Uh, that one, that one, and the San Jacinto, a few other ones start out that way. But it's not to say we couldn't take uh, some of our smaller plans, our 1,600, 1,800 square foot plans, uh, change the porch layout on them to make it sym symmetrical on the front, and that way you would immediately accomplish that look because that's really. The only reason that one, that farmhouse style looks so different than some of the other ones that you've seen is that it is perfectly symmetrical on the front elevation. Is that the fair? The Refurio, okay. Danielle, I see that. I can actually see the wheels turning in her head. <laughs> All right, yeah, check out the Refurio. Um, so Jones is asking if we can assist with any leads on available properties in Brazoria County, or do they need to seek land on their own? And is also thanking us for the videos. Thank you so much for watching us. Thanks. Uh, so the... Yeah, so right now, just like homes, land is moving very quickly. Um, so any leads, that the best place to look is still going to be what's listed on, on an MLS. What we have found the best place for that that's that's updated real time is Lands of Texas. You go to landsoftexas.com. You can actually sort it by county. Uh, you can sort it by county, uh, size, and price range. Um, and so you can filter it and say, hey, I want everything in Brazoria County that is you know between two and eight acres that's you know no more than $120,000. And and it will just return you those results and you can build a filter where it'll alert you as well as any new ones come on. Um, so that's really the best uh, best way to do it. Or um, we could refer you potentially to a realtor in that area that could help you with that search. But that landsoftexas.com is gonna be probably your quickest real time um, if you're in sign up for the alerts. Perfect. Um, so our friend over on YouTube who was asking about the process, if he was bringing his own plan, uh, just wanted to, to add a little bit more more uh, texture to his, his request. So he owns a construction company, his family does, and they've been approved for construction loans up until they see uh, they're related to the builder, which is why he needs to look at somebody else. So. Yeah, um, they, the, the lenders are, are uh, tight about that. Um, and it's not, it's not just them making up rules. That, that's a real, that's a, that's a federal guideline that they're, that they're, uh, trying to dance around and, and rightfully so. Um, so that's something that we can absolutely help you with. Uh, obviously we don't need a construction loan of any kind. We're going to, uh, you're going to get to use our money interest-free to build this home. So you're going to save a bunch of money anyway. And, and Hey, we're all four family owned companies. So Hundred percent. Part of the Wilson family, and still use our our money for instead of a construction loan. So we'd love to have you. Perfect. Um, Aisha is asking if the porch can be extended. Of course. <laughs> How far do you want to extend it? <laughs> yeah. So th this one already comes with a uh, almost a ten foot deep porch, I think, and I, I think they made it eleven foot six or so, or twelve feet. Um, On the back, yes. Yeah, but I mean, a, a number of our plans come with, you know, uh, ex what we call extended rear porch options, um, or even the cathedral ceiling porch you've seen on a lot of ours, or the Sal, the Driftwood, it's there where Danielle works in Georgetown, and those are 12, 14 feet deep in many, many cases. So, All right, great. And then Candy, who was asking about, about that Magnolia farmhouse, she's actually working on making the Angelina look like, look like that, have that same kind of look. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Candy, we can actually do that and, and love to know where you're building too. So if you want to share that with us, we'd be, we'd love, we're, we're always interested, just curious or nosy. Curious is a better word than nosy. All right. And let's see. Um, Crystal and Derek are asking how much of an upgrade would it be for the same windows that were discussed? 
Okay, so I guess we're talking about maybe the uh, the fixed windows and encasement windows. You may have to um, expand on that. <laughs> the windows that the the casement windows. I bet uh, you yeah, I have the price book pulled up. Um, so this plan, you can talk about this plan, Danielle, while I look at the look at pricing on those windows. This plan comes with them as you see them with the casement and then the, the fixed window with the transom fixed window above. Um, but we can make any windows, any size or type or whatever you'd like, as long as within a bedroom, it can't all be fixed if you've got to be able to escape. Um, but yeah, casement, we can switch them out to casement. I don't know. Are you pulling up the price? Yeah, I've got it up there. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> we're, yeah you, you've stalled long enough. I haven't. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Good job. Yeah, well done. Like a pro. So yeah, the uh, casement windows are about nine hundred dollars a piece, um, and and that's just that's not in lieu of one. That's just to add one that's not already there. They're about eight hundred ninety one bucks, um, and then um, the fixed windows, you know, they kind of vary based on the size. So you know, they they range from usually you know, they can be five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars depending on the size of the window. I think these are. They're five oh six oh's, so they're gonna be around a thousand bucks, eleven hundred bucks. Um on that you're looking at here. Um obviously this one here is a little less, this one here is a little more, but yeah, I got what Danielle was saying, and um she she's more than other folks is a ma subject matter expert on this because her husband was worked for the fire department for many, many years. <laughs> uh, is uh these these windows in a bedroom, you have to have what's called egress. So you can't have all fixed windows, you gotta be able to open that window and escape in the event of a fire. You have to have two exits for a bedroom. The door is the optimal one. Uh, and then a window that either operates up and down, which is known as single hung, or casement window, awning window that opens, like Danielle says. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Wonderful. Um, so Candy's just letting us know some more information. Oh, She's in Caldwell, great. Texas. Um, they have a meeting in on Saturday uh, with our folks in Bryan. Uh, and she was recommended to us by her sister, uh, as well as a couple of friends that have begun building with them. So thank Very you so cool. much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I was just there yesterday and met a couple that's building just west of Caldwell that was there. And you're gonna get to see, if you go Saturday, you'll get to see the canyon all made up and ready for concrete. So you'll get to see the post cables, you'll get to see the uh, beams that are dug. So it's a, it'll be a very educational experience. Um, there's a lot, a lot going on there right now. Um, there was one question, Don. I saw it was put on here twice about what's the cost per square. The different, generally speaking, to build a casita versus generational living quarters. Did you see that one? A Wendy Flynn. Oh, sorry. Let me look for that one. Um, it's on there twice. Um, so I want to be sure. It, it must be important if it's on there two times. Absolutely. Actually, if you go to the very top, it's like the sixth or seventh one that was there. But. Um, She's asking, what is the cost difference, generally speaking, to build a casita, which I know Danielle's an expert on, um, and then um, versus, let's say, a generational living quarters attached to the home. So, Okay, yeah, for some reason, I do not have that one in my stream, but yeah, okay. I can see it over live on Facebook. So yeah, what's the cost difference uh, to build a casita versus a generational living quarter attached to the home? You're definitely going to be yeah. more to do the casita. Um, yeah. and, and really, it's going to depend on how far you take the generational living quarters, right? Like that's, that could be pretty broadly speaking. Um, is there an entire kitchen or kitchenette in there? Um, obviously, it's going to have a bedroom, a bathroom, and some type of, of living area is kind of what I envision. So it'd be really specific to what you had in mind. Um, the casita is going to cost more because simply because we're doing a, an entire another structure, right? So we've got all four sides of, of that. So you got the perimeter beam of the foundation, you've got the four walls, you've got more roof, uh, more veneer, whether it's stone or brick or stucco or whatever. Um, but you also probably need more space to do a casita. You're going to have a little bit more uh, complication on the tie in. Uh, so you got sewer. Right, so you got septic or, or septic or sewer. You got water. You got power. Um, if you have natural gas or propane, you got that. So you're running all those things to two different buildings. So the casita is going to be a little bit more involved, but it's a it's a it's a kind of a more unique look as well. Um, and uh, then the generational living quarters. So um, you're 
you you end up with probably a smaller space on the generational living quarters. So that's kind of the the offset. So the casita does cost more, but you're going to get more space for that for that person or those people. As a, and obviously it's more private because um, it's a completely different structure than the. I mean, generational living quarter sounds neat, except that it's still in the same house as everybody else. So you're still kind of at some point or another, you're still going to be using the same common area uh, to some degree. Okay. Grandparents okay. play their music super loud. They just do. We, they like rock and roll. I don't know what it is about them. Fair enough. Um, Angela is asking about the master shower in the home and how it's different from the model home. Um, the glass in this one is going all the way to the floor. Is that the standard shower? Let's go over and see. I think we still have a framed shower in the old model. Uh, no, it's semi-frameless as well in the model. So, uh, okay. but yeah, to answer your question, this this is how it would be built today. The glass would go all the way down. I mean, it stops at the tub. It, it, it obviously doesn't go all the way down, but in this, it, it goes down to the floor. Um, I actually had the rock wall pulled up on the website. So make sure I'm not I'm not speaking out of turn. It has happened uh, where I've spoke out of turn. Yeah, so it's, a, okay, so the, it has a, um, there is a pony wall um, on the on the left side of the shower that this customer evidently did, did away with um, at some point, either up front or during construction. Um, so in the model, there's a pony wall here, um, and, and the door goes all the way to the bottom. But it, either way, you want to do it. It's um, it's not going to make that much of a difference one way or the other. Am I, is that right, Danielle? Be pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Choice. Okay, great. Great question. And very keen eye for detail, Angela. Thank you. Yes. Um, Harry is asking how much it would cost to have a concrete parking pad in front of the garage. That depends on where you're yeah. building. Yeah, depends on where you're building, um, how big of a pad you're talking about. Um, so we would we can do it on a bid type system, get a bid from our contractors for, for flat work in that area and whatever size you want and tell you how much it would cost. Um, you're also more than welcome to, to get bids from other contractors on your own. Just kind of depends on how you want to go about it. Yeah, I, I would I would tell you to probably budget somewhere between six and ten dollars a square foot, depending on where in the state um, you're building. I've seen it as, as maybe as little as five fifty, but that's that uh, that's pretty rare and it has to be pretty flat um, to see that. But I, I'd, I'd budget somewhere between six and ten dollars a foot. Your typical parking pad, let's say it's a size of five hundred square feet, um, so so I'd, you know somewhere between three and five thousand dollars is going to be very very close. Uh, for concrete, and that's with three-eight steel on eighteen-inch centers, and you know, uh, labor material, everything, okay. all in, all done. And Bob is sharing with us that he just started his rock wall in Garland. Hey. Awesome! Thanks, Bob. Thanks for trusting us. Send us pictures. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We'll send you a T-shirt. You send us pictures, we send you a T-shirt. We got a good system. Um, Lupe is asking if it's possible to have a shutoff valve for the water main installed in the utility room. <laughs> you can, um, uh, but Lupe, let, let, me let me give you the Eric opinion on this and you do what you, you want. Um, if I'm going to shut off the water to my house, probably because I'm going to work on it or maybe I'm going on vacation or something like that, I'd like it shut off outside my house. Um, if, if that's really something I'm worried about, I don't want any water in the If I'm trying to really shut it off, I want it off before because and then I can drain the house. Uh, so I would like, you know, when we, we put one right outside uh, the home, that's, that's the easiest thing to do is to put one where the water line is coming up into the home. I would put a shutoff valve out there and that way you can shut that valve off, open the nearest hose bib and maybe we'll foster two inside and literally it'll drain all the water out of the house and you're kind of winterized. Um, that's, that's, but to answer your question, yes, we can put a shutoff valve on the water main in the utility room. If it were me, I'd put that joker on the outside so that I can have the house void of water. Because nothing beats vacation quite like coming back to water sim somewhere in the house. So. Yes. Washing machines, they're a finicky animal sometimes. Hmm. Uh, Nancy is asking what the approximate cost of the upgraded sinks in the kitchen are. Okay. Yeah. So I know in this one we upgraded to a farmhouse sink. Yeah, we did a farmhouse sink in this one, so I've got those. Uh, uh, yeah. 
those pulled up. They they range. Um, those are about six hundred and fifty bucks. Those are really not that expensive at all. Um, and then all the way up to kind of your your fire clay or hammered copper, you start getting closer into the twelve hundred to eighteen hundred dollar range. So there's there's about six or seven different types of farmhouse sinks that we have available, and they range from yeah six fifty to about eighteen hundred dollars. Okay, great. And from what I can see, that is our last question. So if you guys have any other questions, type fast um, so we can get it answered for you. Or if I accidentally missed you, please um, type it again for us. Yeah, and we're, and we're super, super grateful everybody that joined us both on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, thank you, Danielle, for joining us, yeah. taking time out of your busy schedule. This was great. I appreciate it very much. Beautiful home that you designed for this customer. Uh, if, if they want to get a hold of you, how do they find someone as helpful as you, Danielle? How would they find you? Do you want me to give them my direct number? Because I, well, I, you. I mean, you're <laughs> call me, <laughs> okay. call Danielle. Uh, so yeah, she's at our Georgetown location, they're open seven days a week. I blank the only day she's typically out there Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and she'd be glad to help you with any questions you have uh, for designing a custom home anywhere in Texas. Um, they don't have to just sell them in the hill country there. She can sell a house anywhere. Uh, and I think a few more took you up on your offer, uh, Dawn. Yes, Harry would like to know if it's possible to have two separate faucets in the shower rather than to have the one circle type. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah, and, and Harry, sometimes we do the both the different shower heads on one valve. You could have different shower heads on different valves. You can have the rain overhead shower. You know, when you wash your hair like me, it's very important that there's water coming down to get all the shampoo out. It's mission critical. So uh, Donna says, thanks for doing these. And then Angelica's asking how long the actual construction time was on this one. I think I actually had that pulled up. Um Hold on just a second. I had gold mine pulled up. Oh, wow. Uh, CRM. I know. I know. So this one was, um, took a little, right at a little less than nine months, actual construction on a 3,500 square foot custom home. So Perfect. about nine months. All righty. And that is everybody. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you, Don, for moderating this and setting it Absolutely. all up. Uh, Nick, Kelsey, to thank you all for helping. Appreciate that too. Um, and thanks again, Danielle. Appreciate it very much. I can find her in Georgetown, Texas. We are so, so grateful for all of you that joined us today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. We would love to help answer any questions. You can find us obviously on our YouTube channel. You can find us on our Facebook page here. We have a website that's got all of our floor plans. There's pricing on there. There's floor plans you can customize. There's virtual tours on there. Um, and obviously we have 11 locations across the state that are open seven days a week. So We'd be glad to see you there. Go to the website, schedule an appointment. We reach out to you. We can do virtual appointments. We can do in-person appointments. We can talk to you over the phone. Anything we can do to help answer your questions, we'd love to someday soon make you part of the Tilson.